Hello everyone, I'm Marcus from LearnDataTypeSkill.com So in the previous tutorials, I show you how you can use linear regression to predict the revenue of a company and also I show you how to use logistic regression for a non-linear problem in which uh, you can use the model to predict the people who might leave the company and I also show you how you can do machine learning without any coding at all with using Orange software so in this tutorial, I want to use another method and also another data set to show you how you can do machine learning with support vector machines, which is also one of the most popular machine learning techniques that a lot of people are using today. So um, without further ado, let's look at what is support vector machines. So if you were just to go to my website, learndatasciencekill.com, um, you can see that I have written an article regarding support vector machines with using R. Um, even though is the example is uh, given in R, but the concept that is defined in this article is the same. So if you just go through the article, uh, I explain about how support vector machine works. So in fact, support vector machines is a supervised learning method, uh, and how it works is to look for a hyperplane that separates the groups with largest margins. So if you just look at this picture, we have uh, some data points and what support vector machine does is to look for um, the hyperplane that will separate these data points into two different groups. So what, how it look for the uh, hyperplane is my first look for the support vectors and uh, the separate uh, two groups of data at one point of time. So these support vectors can be data points that are close to the hyperplane and the position and orientation of the hyperplane will be depending significantly on the selection of the support vectors. So you can see that uh, after uh, searching for the support vectors, SVNs will be able to define a maximum margin hyperplane between the support vectors. So in the most simple case, it's very easy to form a hyperplane between two groups of data. And in 2D case, a hyperplane is simply just a line. However, in real life, um, this, the problem will not be so simple and straightforward in which uh, it's so easy to find a clear and defined hyperplane uh, between uh, two clusters of data points. Uh, most of the time, you will end up into uh, some data like this, in which um, the linear uh, boundary is just not available. So, so what support vector machines can do here is that it actually offers the kernel functions, which uh, we call it kernel tricks. Uh, so these kernel functions are actually mathematical functions which will take the data as an input and then if you transform it uh, into a higher dimensional space uh, so after the transformation the SVNs might be able to find a linear separator so for example in this case when the 2D um, plane is transformed into a 3D plane and at the same time the, uh, the hyperplane is transformed from 1D to 2D so in this case uh, um, when a 2D problem is transformed to a 3D problem, hyperplane becomes a 2D plant. So, so the advantages of support vector machines is that uh, most of the time it could provide precise predictions and also it can be used for linear and non-linear problem. And also in this uh, tutorial, we are going to cover how to use support vector machines for regression problem. And at the same time, SVNs can also be used for classification problem. Um, I might not cover in this tutorial, but I'm going to show you in another tutorial of how you can use support vector machines for classification. But here we are going to first focus on regression. And then the only disadvantage of uh, support vector machines is that uh, sometimes the computation might be a little bit longer so uh, you might need to give some time for the support vector machines to find the best answer for you and uh, the, the problem that we are going to look at today is a data set called diamond the diamonds data set so if you just go to kegel.com and then look for a diamonds data set 
uh, you just need to register yourself and then you will be able to download the data set so this data set actually consists of uh, 53,940 rows with 10 different variables and then uh, in the data set you can see that we have variables such as carat which is the carat width of the diamond and then we can also see that uh, there is cut quality of the diamond which is defined in the fair good very good premium ideal and, and also we have color with d being the best and j being the worst sorry and then we have clarity uh, so fl is forest i3 is level 3 and yeah so th there is also an order of uh, for the worst to the best here and also you, you can see the depth which is the height of the diamond table the width of the diamond and we also have the price which will be uh, the thing that we want to predict in this example and therefore it will be our response variable and then we also have length width and depth which is the z so without further ado just go ahead and download this data set and save it in your folder and then we are going to create a notebook in the Google Colab and then we are going to read in the data from your folder uh, to the notebook so that we can uh, do some data pre-processing and then after that we are going to train our model and do some prediction. So without further ado, let's look at how we can do it right now. So the step one that you have to do is to read in the data so what we're going to do is the from google.collab imports files and then upload it is equal to files dot upload so by running this function we will be able to choose the file that we want to upload and in this case i want to upload the diamond data sets which I have downloaded from Kaggle website so one so after you have uh, uploaded the data to Google Colab notebook uh, you should have the diamonds data set uh, in the file folder here and the next thing that we want to do is to uh, import pandas library and then we are going to uh, read this data into a data frame so to do that Data import pandas as pd, and then the df is equal to pd dot read underscore csv, and then diamonds dot csv, and then index underscore calls is equal to zero. So go ahead and run that, and then we say df dot head. So now we have written our data into a data frame and then the next thing uh, that we probably want to do is some data manipulation also exploring the data and from here we can see that cut, cur cut color and quality are in some values probably object, object data types uh, which we will have to transform later on to integer or probably uh, float data type because uh, Support vector machines will not be able to use these values uh, for the purpose of prediction because the machine will not be able to understand what is ideal, what is premium, <coughs> what is the VS1 and so on. So the next thing that we want to do is to further explore the data. We can use uh, df.describe or df.info for that. So step two, explore the data, df describe and then from here we can generate some um, uh, statistical value for different variables or columns in the data set for example the minimum maximum first quarter third quarter mean and standard duration and so on so we can also say the f.info in which we can see that we have 53,940 rows in this data set and then we also uh, have uh, cut color and quality in object data type uh, which we do not want 
it to be in this form we want to transform it uh, so in the previous tutorials I show you how you can do the transformation with using label encoder from scikit-learn but in this uh, tutorial I want to show you something different uh, I want to show you how you can use a mapping function to uh, uh, map the key values uh, in a dictionary uh, so that we can change it from the original uh, string value to a uh, numerical value so um, the next thing that we want to do is to first we want to look at <coughs> how many uh, um, different uh, variables are in this uh, cut color and quality and then we want to create a dictionary and then after that we want to do the mapping so to do that <coughs> um, data analysis and data rendering so EF The first one is cut. Dot unique. If you run this, you can see uh, we have ideal, premium, good, very good, and fair in the cut columns. And then we can repeat it for a uh, color and quality. And quality. <coughs> So what we want to do is to represent these uh, values in numerical form and then we can actually go back to the diamonds data set in kgo.com then from here we can see that um, there's a, there are some descriptions um, that uh, for the cut um, fair is the worst and then ideal is the best and then j color is the worst and then d is the best and then for clarity, I1 is the worst and then IF is the best. So based on this information, we can actually create a dictionary. Uh, I have already created beforehand. So I'm going to just copy and paste it to our Python notebook. <clears throat> so you can see that I created a dictionary in which fair uh, key, the values is one, good is two, very good is three and so on. And then for color, I also define one, two, three, four, five for um, different color. And for quality, I also define one to eleven for uh, different quality values. So go ahead and run that. <clears throat> so the next thing that we want to do is to use a mapping function um, to replace the original values in this column into the values that we want. To do that. <clears throat> we are going to say um, df cut equal to df cut dot map and, and then we put in the dictionary that we want to map and then same for color and quality just go ahead and run this and then if we see df dot head again oops And then we can see that uh, uh, original values in cut color and quality has been replaced by uh, numerical values that we put in the dictionary. And then the next thing that we can do is uh, dvf.info. And then we can see that now cut color and quality are no longer object data type. They have become an uh, integer data type which can be used in the support vector machines for the purpose of training and prediction. So I'm going to stop here and in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can train a model and then uh, I will also show you how we can split the data into test data and train data and then we will use the uh, um, train data to train a model and also uh, we will predict the di price of the diamond uh, based on the input from the test data. So I will see you in the next video.